It's Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. Man, have I got an 80s classic today. We'll learn how to do Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds. So this one's gonna be pretty simple. Um, we got Charlie uh, Burchill is playing uh, these guitar parts here. It's a keyboard dominated track though. So we have obviously some guitar stuff in here, but a lot of the chord voicings that you're hearing are actually, you know, kind of higher voicings being played on the keyboard. But we're gonna try to keep it closer to what Charlie actually played. Um, and so some of this I had to kind of reference some live stuff too, especially for the really low muted parts during the verse. Uh, but we're going to get through the whole track here. I uh, hope you guys will be following along. Before I get into it though, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring that notification bell so you know it's a new video and you can kind of like and comment and watch them. It really helps. Um, and if you want to really support what I do here on YouTube and catch me in a lot of live courses or live chats just with my academy, join my academy. You'll see a link to it in the description below. That link will give you a free seven day trial too. My academy contains all of my guitar courses covering everything from complete beginner courses to more advanced stuff and technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, you name it. Um, and I'm starting to do live courses there. So I have a new blues rock boot camp that's going live this weekend. And you can just watch me teach the course live and ask questions as I do it. And, um, but, and also complete access to all the other courses as well. Um, so I hope to see you guys there. Let's jump into this track. So we are in standard tuning here. Um, and I'm going to start with this riff, a little bit of distortion on it and some delay and reverb kind of helps bring this out. It's kind of fun to play. All right, so we're going to start here with just a regular D power chord. So that's going to be the fifth fret on the A string, seventh fret on the D, and then the seventh fret on the G. So just play that. Then all you gotta do is move that shape up two frets. And when you move up two frets, now you can use all the other strings on the guitar. The open strings, let those ring out. And you can really hear that B string ringing on the uh, recording. And then he'll do a little bit of a bar, just a little bit, not a huge bar dive. Just to give it a little bit of texture. So we have this. And then we go back to the D. So when you go back to the D power chord, you just want to hear these three strings. So make sure your index finger is going to be muting, first of all, the, the low E string. So I'm just like the tip of the index finger is touching the bottom of that string. And then the B string and the uh, high E string are also being muted by the index finger by the bottom of the index finger. Not really the bottom of it, just kind of the edge of it, a little bit lower than the note that you're actually playing. So that's how you can play those three strings and not have the other ones ring out. And then when you get up here, you release those mutes. So play this. Then so then you go back down to the D. And then the second time through, instead of going up to this E power chord, you're gonna jump up here and grab a natural harmonic at the 12th fret on the D string and the G together. So just a harmonic, just place your finger right directly over the 12th fret, just very lightly touching the strings, and just pick those two middle strings, and then lift your finger off. So like this. And now when you do that, you're gonna do another bar dive, and then let it come back up. And then we're gonna end it with the same power chord shape, but now at the third fret. So you're gonna wanna mute all the strings around it. So that's the third fret on the A, fifth on the D and the G, and then up back up to that D. So we have this all together. Just repeat that. All right, so that's the main riff, kind of the intro. When you're doing, hey. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> enough of the singing for the lesson. So now let's jump into the verse. Now this verse is extremely low in the mix and heavily palm muted. Um, so I'm kind of picking it up on the recording. Uh, you, you, I couldn't find an isolated track of it or anything, but then when you hear him play it live, you hear a little bit better of what he's doing. Um, it comes out a little bit better. So uh, what's going on there is this. <laughs> So 
So what I'm doing there is just going kind of kind of a funky little riff, really. It's just going between nine and seven on the D string. So the kind of so you just do that a few times. And then you're going to come over to the G string and go six, se uh, seven, six, seven. The melody's there. But I'm still, it's just kind of doing a strict, like kind of eighth note feel, but I'm muting it sometimes. It's kind of hard. It's, it's, this is one thing, like if I kind of taught you exactly what I'm doing, it'd be more confusing than anything else. The best way to kind of feel is just kind of hear it and feel it. I'm doing consistent down up, but some of the notes, some of them are muted and some of them, I'm just loving out the pressure to mute it and some of them you're, you're accenting the note, so. So after that seven, six, seven, it goes back over to the seventh fret on the D and that's the pattern and the D just repeats that, so we have. change the fingerings as I was playing it there, but it's just like the same notes. All right, so that's what's going on during the verse. Like I said, it's better just kind of kind of lock into a feel. Don't have to be too precise with it. And then we get to the actual chorus. Uh, and the chorus looks like this. So this first chorus is obviously shorter and a little bit different than the than the remaining ones. Um, so we basically are going to start with just an E major chord, and then it's going to go over to a D sus two. So if you don't know what that is, this is a regular D major chord, but you're going to lift up the note that's on the high E string. So it's going to be an open high E string. So this. And then you're going to come over here and just play an A major bar chord. He does it right here at the fifth fret. So it's a full bar at the fifth fret. And you're going to have the sixth fret there on the G, seventh fret on the D, and then seventh fret on the A. And kind of a way to, to play this is like you. When you get to the chord, kind of hit the bottom three strings first, kind of the power chord. And then strum the full chord. Kind of helps match the, uh, the keyboards too. And then we do the same thing we did here at the 5th fret, we do it at the 10th fret. The D major chord. So we have this. Don't you forget about me. So the second time through, you're just gonna get to the A. And basically play the A twice, um, kind of twice as long instead of jumping up here to the D. So that's the difference between the remaining courses. The remaining courses, they just continue the same for E to D sus2 to A to D and just keep going and going. But this uh, first chorus, the second time through, when you get to the A, it's gonna hold that twice as long. All right, and then we're gonna get to, I consider this a bridge. There's two parts in this song, you probably consider it a bridge. So I think there's two bridges. All right, so we're gonna, that's what we're gonna call it. So this bridge, uh, now when you see him play it live, he's, you could play a lot of these chords, or all of them is just open position chords, kind of cowboy chords, but he seems to be doing them as bar chords, probably just to give it a little bit more of a subdued sound. So it looks like this.
right, so that's just a C major uh, bar chord. So we're at this third fret there on the A string. You're gonna borrow the fifth fret across the D, G, and the B. You kind of pick across it if you want, just kind of lighten it up. And then we just go to this G major uh, bar chord. So it's the same as this A chord we did before. Just two frets lower at the third fret. And then we're gonna go to this D. So it's just two frets up from the C. Basically what we just did, the C to G, we're just gonna do that two frets higher. And just repeat that. And then we're back to that same that same intro that we did earlier. Um, and then we get to the same verse. So we play the exact same verse again. And then we get to the chorus. The second chorus is now longer than the first. And like I said before, it's pretty much the same way we played it the very first time we played through the chorus chords, which was the E to the D sus 2 to the A. All the way up to the D, the 10th fret. We're just going to do all that four times. And then we have the second bridge. Uh, I, I'm sort of considering it. It's the one where that little keyboard melody is. That's going on. Uh, so there's obviously no, no real guitar here, but there is a chord progression under it. So we can just play the chords um, that is being played by the synths. Um, and it's a pretty simple progression. It's uh, just pretty similar just to what we were doing in the chorus. Um, except it's a full D major chord, the second chord. And this one, uh, it sounds good to kind of keep them as really light kind of open position chords. So just while that keyboard part is going on. all I'm kind of doing in that part and then it gets back into the chorus riff again and just repeats the chorus. So those chords is just a, this E major chord and when we get to this D instead of doing a D sus 2 just do a full D major so we just have that second fret there on the high E now. Then to an A major chord and then back to that D. Then we go back to the chorus, and we're just repeating the same four chords uh, that we did in the second chorus, and you are good to go. So, like I said, it's a pretty simple song. Uh, not a lot of very complex chords in it and stuff. Um, very synth-driven track, too. So there's a lot of things that you could do. When I used to play this in a cover band, I would do all the... I would do all the kind of the all the higher voicings that the keys are doing, I would do that on guitar as well, but we'll kind of try to keep it closer to what uh, Charlie Burchill was doing on the actual recording with this video. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.